Hey everybody, what's happening? Uh, well, a long day, rough day, rough day at work. <sighs> I haven't really been coming out and smoking a pipe in the evenings. Um, yeah, just because spending time, you know, with the family in the evenings, staying in, reading, falling asleep on the couch. So, um, I don't know. It's a rough day though, and uh, I need to just step away for a minute. So I'm out in the car, having a pipe and a beer. Yes, the car's running, but uh, I live in a small town. Smallish town. So, it's not like I really gotta worry too much about it. And I'm not moving the car, so I'm not driving. Uh, so, I've mentioned this a couple of times. Negra Modelo. Good stuff. In my not so humble opinion, Modelo is probably the best Mexican beer. Whether it's Especial Negra Modelo or Victoria, which for anybody that doesn't know, Victoria is made by Modelo. If you've never had Victoria, give it a shot. Good beer. And uh, <laughs> I got home at 4.30 and it's 7.30 and this is number four. That tells you what kind of day I've had. So, um, I still have yet to edit and upload my two previous videos, which by the time you see this one, they will be uploaded. And, um, but I got a long weekend coming up. I got a vacation day and a personal day. Uh, book ending Christmas weekend. I'm off Friday and Tuesday along with Christmas Day, so I'm off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, five days off. Woohoo! Uh, it's been a long time. I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, so, I figured I would, uh, get the ball rolling ish again and uh, hop on giving you my thoughts on Peter Stockaby's luxury bullseye flake now I've heard people pronounce it Stokeby's I've heard people pronounce it Stockaby's the people I've heard pronounce it Stockaby's are British English it's their language. It's got two K's. Makes the O short. So technically it should be Stockaby. I don't know how it's actually pronounced, but my best guess is it's pronounced Stockaby. It's uh it's a Wednesday, so I've got it in one of my weekday Dublins here. It's one that I've actually sanded and worked on. Well you can't really see any detail on it in this light. I'll get to that one at some point. Actually, right there you can get some uh, some detail on it. So, if you don't know the tobacco I'm talking about, you probably haven't been smoking a pipe very long. Um, luxury Bullseye Flake. It's a medallion, spun cut, curly cut, whatever you want to call it. basically a twist. It's 
it's been cut in the flakes for you and it is a Virginia Perique wrapped around the core of Black Cavendish for anybody that doesn't know but like I said if you don't know then you haven't been smoking a pipe for very long now as far as Virginia Periques go this one's pretty unique because it has that core of Black Cavendish and even though it's just a little little bitty center the flakes are you know good size round and I didn't bring them with me didn't bring the jar out here um, flakes are pretty good size round uh, probably inch and a half two inches around diameter you know and they got good good half inch core circle ovalish of black cavendish so here's what really makes this interesting you got people that fold and stuff their flakes I've done it I've tried it don't really have anything against it I just yeah I think it burns better when you rub the flake out and I don't when I say rub out I don't like take it in my hands and you know rub it like some people do I kind of kind of fold it like I'm gonna fold and stuff but then I take and press the whole thing against my hand and you know rub it around and work it down and then just kind of rub it like that one of these days I'll I'll put that in a video I guess so the interesting thing about this bullseye flake is depending on which one you do changes the flavors that you get a little bit not necessarily changes the flavor but kind of changes the way the flavor hits you which I think is pretty cool as you got the option you can kind of you know if you fold and stuff depending on if you put it core down if you put the the black Cavendish core down you're really only gonna get a hint of the Cavendish as you smoke down until you get to the core of the, the black Cavendish until you get to that and once that burns you're gonna it's gonna blast you if you put a core up which I've done it's it's difficult to do you gotta kind of push the coin down this way and then turn it over and, and stuff it in that way and then push down on the cabin dish on top and it's 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 not easy to do but then you're gonna you know burn that cabin dish first but the flavor of it's gonna go through the whole bowl of tobacco that's still sitting in there and kind of you know uh, infuse the tobacco that's in there which is an interesting way to do it I, I recommend trying all of these by the way and figuring out which one you like best and there's what I do what I do now is actually rub the flake out and then the core doesn't really rub out the rest of the like the way the rest of it does so I'll take that and just kind of crumble it and mix it around in there and then you know pack the pipe that way and it just kind of I prefer that because I uh, when I taste it it you know the flavors are nice and even in a way for me and, and that's just the way I prefer it but I, for anybody that's not smoked it which if you haven't smoked luxury bullseye flake yet um, you're messing up you're messing up get you some because it's, it's good stuff um, so um, 
for me, doing it that way, it really, the flavor is more spread out and more even and, and consistent through the whole entire bowl. Now, I've had to relight this a couple times, but it's just because I'm talking. If you're not talking while you're smoking this stuff, it burns just fine. Let's talk about the flavor. Now, the Virginias, Virginias are definitely out front. Very lemony, citrusy Virginias. The Preaks are in there. Pretty subdued though. And then that black Cavendish. Now normally black Cavendish is pretty sweet. But for some reason, the black Cavendish in this stuff kind of adds like a sour twist to the overall taste. So you end up with this sour lemon peppery but not quite like lemon pepper, like chicken or something, but... Uh, the preek's there, but it's not super strong, so you're not getting that super tingly, peppery kind of thing like you, you do with some other blends. But it's definitely... It's just really wonderful. Lemony sour, citrusy, slight pepperiness, just barely, kind of thing going on, but still very tobacco, that tobacco flavor, it's not, it's not like an aromatic where it, it, it tastes like, you know, lemon zest or something that's been sprayed onto a tobacco. It's it's just it's tobacco flavor that's got kind of a citrusy lemony kind of tang. Kind of a, a citrus tang with some spice to it. So good. I think I've I've smoked almost four ounces of Peter Stockaby's Luxury Bullseye Flake now. And out of everything I've smoked, this is definitely one of my favorites. This this is just some good stuff. It's gotten to the point where I, I, I basically I don't ever want to be out of it. I have been. I think I bought like one ounce of this. And I loved it. I bought two more ounces. And then I was out of it for a couple of months. And I just picked up another ounce recently. Now I'm down to only having two coins left. <laughs> so, I really, really love this stuff. And a lot of people talk about that, like, fine white ash. And that's, that's exactly what we've got going on here. This is just such a well-made tobacco. So if you tried Virginia Periques and you like Virginia Perique, you try this one. And if you haven't tried this one, you, 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 you need to. You got to. It's good stuff. Okay, so I'm at 16 and a half minutes already, and I haven't really said that much. But, um, yeah, I, I really love this stuff. You need to try it if you haven't. And I'm going to end with a very funny story from tonight. This just happened a few minutes ago. Uh, about 20, 25 minutes ago. My, uh, my stepson, Elijah, six years old, not feeling well tonight. Didn't eat dinner with us, really. Finally started feeling hungry. He says, I, I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And, you know, my wife had the baby. And so, I'm like, okay, okay buddy, I'll, I'll give you a hand. He's like, ah, I can do this. I got it. I was like, 
you sure you got it? He's like, yeah, pretty much. So, pretty much. So, buddy, it, you know, if you tell me pretty much, I'm going to still want to help you. you. I was like, if you're absolutely certain, you know, if you're sure that you got it on your own, you tell me, when I say, if you got it, you say, absolutely. Then I'll, I'll leave you on your own. Like so, if you got this, he goes, eh, pretty much. He's like, all right, I'm gonna hang out just in case. So he decides he wants to toast the bread. So he toasts the bread. And he gets done. He brings it over. And he sets it down on the plate. He gets the peanut butter. He gets some on the knife. And he spreads it on the bread. And uh, he starts licking the knife, licking the peanut butter off the knife. He's like, dude, are you done with that knife? Uh, like, you planning on sticking that back in the peanut butter or the jelly? He's like, hmm. I was like, G give me the knife. Take the knife away from him. Get him a clean one. I'm like, here, don't lick this one. I said, all right, let me show you a trick. So I take the knife and I, I get a little more peanut butter. He, he didn't have a whole lot on the bread. I, I put the proper amount on the bread. I was like, okay, now you see that little bit of peanut butter that's still left on the knife? He's like, yeah. I wipe it on the side of the jar. I'm like, you see, there's still some on there? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So I take the piece of bread that didn't have anything on it. I wipe the knife on there. I was like, you see? Now the knife's pretty much clean. He's like, He's like did you make that up? No, buddy, I didn't make that up. It's like, I, I, it's, it's an old, old thing, dude. Every, you know, everybody knows that. He's like, well, who thought of that? Who, who, you know, who invented that? Like, I don't know. Probably the, the first person that made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, buddy. I, I got no idea. You know, George Washington Carver, I don't know. He's like, yeah, either him or Guy Fox. Guy Fox? No, it wasn't Guy Fox. Get your sandwich. Get go. go. Get out of here. Guy Fox. <sighs> so, that's it for tonight. I I hope somebody gets a chuckle out of that. Finds it as funny as I do. So, till next time. Take it easy.